Welcome to the Church of St. Rosalie's in Hampton Bays, New York. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Welcome to all of you joining in prayer as we begin. Father Manaloni is our priest celebrant and Deacon Jim will be assisting. Please join us as we start our celebration. Alleluia, love is alive.
us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your holy ones to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, and all of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand of God. He received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father, and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Until at last I sit by your side. 
is nothing, no joy can be complete until at last I sit by your side. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's work, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourn, realizing that you are ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things, like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Since this took place, 
Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us when he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Social distancing. Everywhere I go, I'm reminding, reminded to maintain my distance from my fellow person. I cannot go to Costco. I can't go to my work. I can't go to my classroom. I can't teach. And I cannot receive the sacraments because there's a need for social distancing. I don't like social distancing very much, but this is not a commentary of the social dis distancing policy, be it good or be it bad. Rather, before all this, before the pandemic, before COVID-19, before any of this had even started or was fault to begin, I sat down and I wondered, I examined my soul, I examined my conscience, I examined my heart, and I asked myself, how often have I, how often do us all have maintained a social distance from our Lord and Savior before all of us? The scriptures today teach us that he's alive. That first reading David reminds us from the, that this is foretold of old. Peter reminds us in his letter that Jesus has been here before the beginning of time as the second person in the Trinity. You know, I especially like the first reading with its reference to King David. I like David for two very good reasons. The first one, I kind of feel like he's possibly, maybe, a worse sinner than I am. And for that reason, it makes me happy, and it reminds me also that the sacrament of recon reconciliation is never too far or away from my reach. And number two, I love David because of 
how, when he would feel far from God, what he would do when he felt that distance from God, how he would counter that by remembering when he felt the joy that he had and remembering those times that he danced before God. He used that memory, that recollection, that when he was distant from our God during a period of trial and isolation, he would return. I especially like how King James Version of Scripture in Psalm 41 says it. Return to me, O Lord, the joy of my salvation. In this time of social distancing, how do we encounter Jesus Christ? We see in that gospel, there were two men distancing themselves from their new Christian brothers and sisters in Jerusalem. They were obviously afraid and uncertain, and for good reason. After all, their way of life, their spiritual food, had been snatched away from them just last Friday, in a short three-hour period, from noon to 3 p.m. And now they're forced to live in a new term that I like even less than social distancing, a new normal. But what is powering their fears? Why are they traveling? Well, you know, I think they have good reason. Their fears are real. The world is dangerous. But we're reminded in Scripture that Jesus Christ is our eternal hope. And that while the world is dangerous, we can still keep Him close, not distant, because of that hope. The world did not become safer for those two men. Rather, they learned from the breaking of the bread what Peter teaches today. That Jesus was raised from the dead, so that your faith and your hope are in God. Your faith and hope are in God. And we, all of us, can encounter Jesus because He is alive. He was raised from the dead. And just like those two men, our fears do not go away. Our fears today, of this pandemic, are real. But our hope is eternal through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That our hope in that breaking of the bread of His real presence amongst us is greater than the fear that we have. Until we all join the table, no matter how distant you feel, Jesus Christ is always present on your road. And like David, recall the times that you felt the joy of God's presence, the joy of your salvation. Still united as one community, we unite our voices now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken with the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Like the disciples on the way to Emmaus, let us ask Christ to stay with us a while and answer our prayers. Our response today is, hear our prayer. For the whole church, suffering from isolation from one another and separation from the sacraments, may Christ bring us comfort and strength in our spiritual communion with him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For civil authorities and for all who work toward the common good, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For the safety of our troops throughout the world and that they promote peace and justice, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For the sick of our parish community, especially for Dorothy Morris, Marianne Geyer, and Kathleen Alquette. And for our beloved who are recently deceased, Anne Marie Williams and Ellen Spencer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those intentions known only in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you open our eyes to your Son. Hear our needs and grant what will bring us closer to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands have become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands have become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Pray the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all of holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Yes. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they attain. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, all, re, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, I am not worthy, worthy that you should, should enter, enter under, under my roof, roof but only, only say the word in my, my soul shall be. Shall be.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. So it happened to me again, this time at the beach. I ran into a couple from the parish, I kept six, distance of, six feet apart, of course, but talked to them. And it turns out they did not know that we were putting the masses online. And every so often I talk to somebody on the phone or I run into them somewhere and they, they, they don't know. They tell me they're watching Mass on EWTN. And I say, why aren't you watching our Masses? And they don't know. So you obviously know because you're watching. So if you can spread the word, that would be great. Uh, tell people to, to, to uh, tune in, to, to, to log on to our website and uh, see what's going on. It's very difficult. I have no real, I've discovered, I'm unprepared for a pandemic and I have no way to really efficiently reach out to everybody in the parish. But um, I do have things to say sometimes, and, and, uh, and uh, we have now Divine Mercy is online, so, so please spread the word about the website and the Facebook page, which I'm not on, that's too high tech for me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.